What's up YouTube, back here again with another video, and today we're going to take a look at, and I'll tell you, talk about first impressions and some things you need to know about getting started with the uh, FR Sky Tyrannus x Lite. Now, I made a video uh, unboxing it and, you know, setting the screw and all, but, you know, I was fumbling around a lot, it was very jumpy, and I don't think it really would have helped anybody, probably would have hurt, you know, hurt somebody trying to put things together because I did a few things wrong and I had to work them out but anyway moving on uh, I've flown this a few times now and I got it set up and I've gone through some things so I got it working working good and everything everything is functioning I can show you some cool features that I've discovered so far uh, and then I plan to do a uh, you know a versus to the QX7 because that's I think its closest competitor as far as price and feature set obviously uh, and we'll do some range tests, tests with the internal antenna and the external antenna. I got some cool results with that, actually. I was doing that the other day. Uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. So there you go. All right, so you get this cool case. comes in the box, all right? Here's the box. It comes in. It's in the case. You open it up. Also, there's a sticker pack and the instructions. Make sure you read the instructions because that'll tell you everything you need to know. So yeah, you got a case, uh, you know, pretty good. QX7 for the $107 didn't come with the case, so it's nice because the case and the gimbal protectors. Uh, and here we go. Now, like I said, I've already kind of been using this guy, so I already have the throttle stick set. When you originally get this, it's going to be stuck at, you know, they're going to be both spring loaded like this. And what you do is there's two spots right here. The longer screw goes here, the shorter screw goes here. There'll be a screw package in the box. Put the longer screw in, that'll, that'll release the spring. And then this screw over here sets the tension of the throttle, right? And mine were um, hex heads. Actually, I could pull this out and show you. So you can see in there, it's a little 1.5 millimeter hex screw. And you just turn it in. Mine went in real easy, no problem. And then you get these rubber covers, okay? And the covers go in. So that's like the first thing you're gonna have to do is select your, you know, which stick you want as your throttle stick. And then you're good to go. So if we look around the, the radio, uh, we got you know both our sticks here. Uh, to adjust these sticks, there's a little 1.5 millimeter screw in here. You back it off, and then you can thread these around to move them in and out, and then tighten it down. All right, these are supposed to be Hall Effect gimbals. They feel very good. Um, yeah, so far I'm happy with the gimbals the way they feel. They got that Hall Effect sound. All right, up at the top. See our FR Sky, this is obviously the red. It's a soft touch rubber, that plastic soft touch rubber feel. All right, up at the top are four switches. You got two two position switches and two three position switches. Now these little two position switches are probably a touch shorter than they probably should be. I wish they were all this size. I think this is the perfect length, but uh, either way they do work. They're not too hard to push. You know, they're nice and low pro. Uh, and then you also have two sliders up here, all right? And then up here is the hole for the SM, uh, RPM SMA uh, connector. So this is gonna be for a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Uh, I do have one that fits, a 5 DVI, uh, and it does work, it works well. I'll get into that. Uh, but the internal antenna works pretty well too, actually. So but again, that'll be another video, we'll get into all that. So four switches, two sliders, all right, that's at the top. The bottom of our headphone jack, micro USB, which is a welcomed addition over the mini USB because I have tons of micro USB, not tons of mini USB anymore. Um, we got our upgrade port right here for upgrading receivers, and I have used this, it does work. And our SD card slot right here. On the back, I'm already knocking off the battery covers, but we'll get to that in a second. On the back is gonna be our uh, module port all right, this is the only thing I know so far that fits this is the R The only thing I know that fits this so far is the R9M Lite, okay? But that is back there, and I know people are modding these to take standard. You know, the pins are there. You might have to do some soldering and stuff, but people are modding it to take a crossfire. So there you go. We got our screw holes there on the back, and then our battery covers. So here's where the battery goes to power it. So this is on, let's see, these things always confuse me to get them back on. All right, here we go. So there's takes two batteries down here on the side. So these just twist off, right? There's your battery caps, and they take 
18500 or 18490s. Now, these are 18490, uh, AWIMR 18490, 1100 milliamp hour. Now, these will fit with the button because they're 18490, not 18500. If you're going to get 18500s, make sure it's a flat top. Now, I did find some Panasonics on eBay. They're 2000 milliamp hour, flat top 18500. So, battery selection is a little tough. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, where I found those batteries, they were 10 bucks a piece. I got them coming, they were shipped from the US. So hey, there you go. Almost every other decent cell you'll find are around the uh, 1,000 to 1,100 milliamp hour. Uh, you know, these are good batteries. I don't think you can find them anywhere. I tried to look around, couldn't find any more of these. Um, I had these from my vape days. Uh, these were very good cells. So worst case scenario, at least I have one decent set of cells with some Panasonics in the mail. So those go in, positive in. And then these fiddly ass caps go on. There's like no indicator. They're a pain in the ass. They twist right. All right, now this one for me looks pretty good. And they are, they're kind of loose. They're not that tight. And it could be because the battery's not that tight. Uh, and then this one, you can see the finish ain't the best. So there you go. Got our rubber grips down here. See, they're already getting dirty. There you go. That's the tour around the controller. Let's turn it on. You got to hold the button. Oh yeah, the Welcome front. You didn't even do the front. This is a D-pad for trims. This is our uh, five-way joystick, and you know, so you go up, down, left, right, and you push in. Uh, this is the exit, and this is the shift. I'll show you about that in a second. All right. So you can see I've already got this kind of set up. I've already been through this. Uh, so when it comes up, it'll have just model one there. Now. When you first get this transmitter, okay, hold this button to the left. It's going to take you into the radio setup. Set this up how you need or how you know you're familiar with it. I use AETR because it's a bed flight standard. It's what all my stuff is, so I made sure to switch that. All right, mode two, so that's correct. And then you could just go through all these um, options and select what you need to select. Um, SD card contents. We'll get to that in a second. Let's see where I'm running 2.2.2 and I would also recommend you do a calibration definitely do the calibration all right so you can have you know make sure everything is good so once you get that stuff set up you should be ready to go now holding this button to the right will get you into the model menu all right so here's all the models I have kind of so far getting stuff in here um, I think I'm gonna make the full switch over to this guy uh, so far so good so I'm getting all my models up in here, but uh, so to push and hold, selects a model. All right, now we're selected to the model and getting to the menu of the model, you hold right again. Now we're into the model menu. Now again, this will all look similar if you use the QX7 or an R9, uh, or the R9 or whatever the hell it is, uh, the regular Tyrannus. So there you go. So here's all your model memory stuff, your binding procedure. Now there are some updates in here. Like when you go to bind, it'll ask you if you want one through eight, telemetry on and off, all that good stuff. Uh, select that. Right here is where you're gonna, you can select your antenna preference. For each model, you can change the antenna preference. Uh, and then it's gonna ask you if, you if you definitely want to. Make sure you do not switch this to external without an antenna on here, okay? That's another big thing. So we'll hit exit again. Uh, go right. This is gonna do all your naming, up, down, left, right. This button is your shift, that'll give you your capital or your lowercase, and then exit always brings you out. All right, so these are all the same menus if you're used to a Tyrannus. If you've never used a Tyrannus before, check out another video to explain you how. Check out, there's a lot of QX7 videos. They're basically, you know, once you learn how to use one, you'll learn how to use the others, but, you know, I'm not gonna go through all this stuff. This is not the video for that. Your outputs, your sub trims, uh, your logical switches for your uh, you got your arm, arm motors. reset, right, timer, your Lewis scripts, RSSI values, so there you go. Um, that pretty much covers all that good stuff. Now, here's your trim. trim this is going to be uh, roll and pitch, and then if you hold the shift button, you can trim, trim y'all and trim center. throttle so that's how you'll do that uh, and as far as you know just general flying this guy 
So far, so good. For me, I'm a thummer, okay? I got a couple, my couple of my buddies, they're like hybrid pinchers, so we're gonna test it with that. We're gonna get all our opinions flying this thing and, uh, you know, to help you better inform yourself on what you wanna buy. But as far as this guy goes, the screen is very small. It's, it's a lot sharper than the QX7, but it's very, very small. So yeah, I brought the X7 in here. You can see the size difference in the screen. This is a lot sharper because it's smaller, but you know, you can see it's a lot bigger. Now, I mean, I, if, you're gonna, if you're in this video and you're thinking, shit, I don't know what to get. If you are just a mini quad or a wing pilot and you're a thumb guy, at this point, at this time, I would say maybe you want to lean more towards this guy. Although the battery options are a little weird. You know, there's some some things, you know, this this has just been out a little longer. Uh, there's way more battery options for it. It runs standard double A's out of the box. So you don't have to go buy a no crazy battery. You know, you gotta you gotta kinda weigh those things out. So if you want just want to buy the radio and get going without having, you know, you, you get double A's, it comes with a double A tray, you can get light bows and uh, you know, this thing lasts forever, the battery in here. There's cases, there's gimbal sticks, there's, this is, you know, you can see this is not a standard X7 anymore. I got this super upgraded. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of support out there for this. This is a little bit newer as of today. Uh, this has got your trims broken out a little bit more standard. So if you're flying, a, you know, airplanes and wings, maybe this might be a little bit better for you. This also has the full-size JR port, uh, kickstand, you know. More switches, more options. I mean, overall, I think, I mean, this is a fantastic radio. I, I haven't hit a limitation on this. And even though this has been great so far, there are a few things that I wish that I maybe had, especially like this momentary switch I do like for like resetting my timers and stuff and different things. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's pretty much what I got so far. Uh, let me see, anything else I wanna tell you? I mean, there are some, like I said, there are some differences in here. You do get your um, your RSSI value right here. I guess I can show you that because I don't get it on here and I've never upgraded the firmware on this. And I haven't upgraded the firmware on this. All right, so you see right there, that's gonna be your RSSI value right there. So I mean, it's a cool thing, but you know, I'm FPV most of the time. So for me, it doesn't really matter so much. But it is a cool feature. The X7 does not have that stock out of the box, at least the firmware I have. I'm sure if you update it, I bet you it does have it, but that's cool on there. Uh, yeah, there you go. And I got 103 dB. There you go. I mean, does everything that an X7 does, and at this point a little more. So if you want a controller of this style, um, you know, the controller style, this is your only option. The, the, Q, uh, the Turnigy, Eternity thing, the evolution, uh, you know, good idea, it just fell short in my opinion, so. All right, there you go. Now, the other thing we wanna talk about real quick is the SD card contents. You, if you're gonna to wanna to get sound packs and stuff, okay, see all the stuff in here? Right on the FR Sky website. I'll put a link in the description. You download it, you extract it, you put it on the SD card so it looks like this. So the files are actually visible right in this screen. Uh, and then you're gonna get your sound packs. Uh, there's a standard sound pack that comes on there. I have the amber sound pack again. You can find videos on that uh, But as soon as you get this stuff all correct, you won't get those SD card contents warnings uh, Set your fail safe and if you go to this menu Your model menu. So there you go. That's my first impression so far. I got some videos of actually me flying this thing coming soon uh, So there you go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one